So it's Lenny and Belisi. Um, we're doing a, a presentation today on the present, no, the future and the aorist of the of the Greek verb. That this is the future and the aorist active indicative. Right. We've already done the present and the imperfect. Okay, so um, the the key thing is we've set these up in parallels to show you how the formation works. On the screen, you can see the forms of the present, luo, lues, lue, luomen, luo, lueta, luuse, with the alternation of the e and the o vowel sounds. Sometimes they're omega, sometimes they're epsilon iota, but there isn't something going on there that's fundamental to them. And if you look at the future, okay, it's identical, except that after, before the uh, the o, ace, a, amen, eta, use, there's an S, okay, as a sigma. So effectively, the, what makes the present into the future is the addition of the S at the end of the stem of the verb. The stem of the verb is what you, for the, it's, the, it's really the imperfective aspect stem. Mm -hmm. It's what you get after you chop off the ending from the first principal part. So if it's pi deo, it's pi deo. If it's luo, it's lu, okay? So to make the future, you add that S, and you and you get what you see on the on the blackboard, okay, on Belize's lovely blackboard. If um, I think if there's one other trick to it, okay, which is this: if the if the stem of the verb doesn't end like luo and paideo with a vowel, mm -hmm. okay, because you got that upsilon mm -hmm. there, but with a consonant, as in pempo, well. Uh, pempo is a is the easiest of all cases. If the stem is pemp, and you add an s to it, well, what happens then? You write p plus s, and you get a psi. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pempso spelled. You want to spell, write yeah. it out, but you see pemps, and with a psi, and then pempso, pempsais, pempsais, and so forth. You can don't have to write the whole thing out. And so that pemp s o. Okay, um, because but when there are different consonants at the end of the root, other things happen, and we'll learn more about that um, as we go along. Um, the, the, the key thing is that an S after a consonant um, devoices it and deaspirates it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll show you how that works in detail. That's the way the, the future lurk works for the verbs that we know so far. Now let's look at the aorist, okay? Remember the future, there's nothing special about the meaning of it. It means I will teach, I will release in the case of Luo and so forth. In the case of the aorist, we set it up in parallel and in contrast to the imperfect. So just to review the imperfect, you've got the epsilon at the beginning. If the verbal stem begins with a consonant, like as Luo and Paideo and Pempo do, you get a what's called a syllabic augment, the, sound, the syllable a at the beginning of the verb, which um, makes it uh, into uh, past tense, okay? So as the aorist indicative is only a past tense, okay, in the present, there's a, there's a present, which is the present tense, future, which is the future tense, and the imperfect, which is a past tense of the imperfective aspect. In the aorist, there's only a past tense, and this is it, okay? Um, so it begins likewise with the, with the, uh, um, with this e eh, that signifies past tense, okay? Um, then the constituent in all but one of the six forms after the lu, the basic stem, okay, is sa, okay? So the way the regular verbs work is that you've got, um, you, you, you build on the stem of the present to get the different aspect stems, and what typifies the aspect stem of the aorist is that S-A. So um, the endings of the, let's look at them first, okay? Let's look at the five that are based on the S-A stem where you can see it. Elusa has just the S-A and no ending. Elusas has the single S, which you also see as the ending of the imperfect, right? After the O or the E, you get an S in, this, in the case of a second person singular. In the plural, skipping the third person singular for the moment, you get elusa men, which you know is the first person plural ending, 
in all the forms that we've seen so far, in the present, the future, and in the imperfect. Te, which is likewise in the plural form, this, the U plural form for all the forms. And N, okay, that once was NT, okay, the T drop, dropped out, but that's the third person plural ending in a lot of Greek verbs, and or NT, okay? Um, so we're, we're going to see more examples of things like that as we get, as we get uh, going, and, and this will fit into a, a larger system. But let's look back at the third person singular, which, as you can see, has the same ending as the imperfect, okay? In other words, it's got the e ending, the short epsilon, but you've lost the alpha that comes after the sigma. So this is weird, all right, but We've already talked about how the fact that about the fact that the third person singular in Indo-European languages of, in the third person singular is the weird form of the verb, right? In English, it's the only one that's different. I eat, you eat, he eats, we eat, you eat, they eat. Okay, that's the only one that has a different ending. Yeah. So it's a symptom of something about the third person singular as a weird form, and it here sticks out because it doesn't have that a. Okay. Um, I think that's a helpful thing. Notice that it also can have a new movable, just like the third person plural forms in the present and the future, okay? Um, but that's the basic uh, way in which you build these forms um, in, the, in the Greek verb. Let's look for a minute, um, why don't you open up a new screen, at what happens with S, okay? Let's make a little chart. Um, uh, this this is a, about what's what are called the stop consonants in Greek, okay? Um, and I'm not going to give you the anatomy of making consonants in the language, but these are consonants that are made by stopping the flow of air in your in your vocal apparatus, and um, it's a beautifully uh, a beautifully arranged symmetrical system in Greek. These consonants um, and and Here's the way they work, okay? Um, there, there, there are three kinds. My chart is not very good. Okay, there, there are the ones that you make with your um, lips, the ones that you make with your teeth, and Greeks really did make them with their teeth, and the ones that you make with your soft palate, okay? This is so important, but then, um, and then there are the ones that are voiceless, Okay, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate since I don't have enough room. Okay, those are that are voiced, in which you use your voice box. That's badly written. And then the, those that are aspirated and voiceless. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, here's the what they are in fact. The voiced, the voiceless aspirate is that you make with your lips is pi. Okay, you don't use your voice box p when you say p. Okay, I, I said p, which use my voice, but it's p. Okay, and you make one with your teeth, and Greeks really did make them with their teeth. When we do these, we, we say t, we don't actually touch our teeth. But in, in ancient Greek, they, t, they did it with their tongue touching their, the tip of their tongue touching their teeth. So that, t, and then the, the, the one you do with your palate is kappa, k, okay? So those have no voice box activation. When you when you make the same sound but you use your voice, you get this, beta, b, okay? And with your teeth, delta, and with your palate, gamma, okay? Um, the third ca category are voiceless consonants like p, t, and k, but they have a puff of air after them. Remember, we've talked about this. It's the difference between pot, where there's a puff of air after the P, and spot, where there isn't. Okay, that's an aspirated P. We don't. We're not used to hearing the difference. It's not a difference in the sound or the or the value of the consonant in English. But in Greek, they were different. So that one. That's what we. The actual thing behind phi it was. P with an aspiration, with a little puff of air after it. Um, in the case of the one that you do with your teeth, it's theta, which was like the difference between top and stop, okay? That's the aspirated one here. This is A-S-P. 
and this is the ASP version. That's the reality, okay? I'm not asking, I'm just giving you that for information purposes. You don't have to pronounce them that way. And in the last case, it's this, the key, okay? So what happens in Greek is, um, now, now we should do some erasing here. When you, when you add an S to these consonants, okay, if they're at the end of the stem of the verb, let's just do this little chart, okay? When you add an S to this one, look what happens. It becomes what we said before, C, that is P plus S. Whether it's P or beta or phi, what happens is that the P, it turns into a P, okay, or, or it remains a P. When you do it with this, it originally became TS, okay, whether it was it, it just like PS, but that all turned into, um, into sigma, and then it disappeared. And into, now, now this is not a phi, this is a zero. How am I going to make this look like a zero? Put a line through it? <laughs> it's not a phi. <laughs> Diagonal. All right. And then when you do it with, with kappa, you get k plus s, c. So it's like c, all right? But, but when you, so when you originally, um, um, wait, have I got this right? Yes. All right. So, so that's the that's the what happens with the consonants at the end of of uh, stems. Okay. Well, that's that's as much as I'm gonna say about this at the moment.